The goal of interpretive design is to create captivating experiences that inspire, wonder, educate, and entertain. The trickiest part about doing this is you're, you're thinking about information, educational information that you'd like the, the visitors to learn. They don't have to be interested, however. It's their prerogative. They're out there to enjoy themselves. So defining how to present that information based on are they walking, are they standing on a hilltop, are they on a bicycle, what's going to grab their interest, and then putting it in a form that is entertaining and inspiring and interesting um, and then you will have achieved the crossroads of that place and the meaning of that place. And that is what the interpretive component provides built into, respectfully, into what a landscape plan would offer. I'm Therese McKee, owner and interpretive designer at Signature Design, a unique collaborative of interpretive planners, designers, writers, illustrators, sculptors, and animators who together create educational and entertaining solutions that convey the authentic story of ecological and man-made environments. As a sponsor of the St. Louis chapter of ASLA, we value the organization as a professional resource and learning platform that unites forward-thinking landscape architects with a network of talented specialists such as my company who bring added value to landscape projects. I enjoy bringing interpretive design experiences into the spaces created by landscape architects. Incorporating interpretive elements into their design schemes enhances the value and meaning of the space for the visitor. Basically worked with the landscape plan to do um, a wayfinding map for them and then we did a system of signs that spoke to um, the cultural history, the ecological uh, design of the, this landscape um, spoke to things that could be seen and unseen. We do this by integrating exhibit structures such as signs, kiosks, audiovisuals, mosaics, sculpture, and other creative elements into the natural materials presented in the environment. My goal for the interpretive design was to bring meaning to this wonderful architectural structure, which uh, concept was really looking at the confluence of the two rivers, so it's speaking to the confluence of the Missouri and the, the Mississippi rivers, and the two men, Lewis and Clark, who so courageously um, launched from this site. The landscape architects I'm working with to co-plan this is Planning Design Studios. We are uh, creating, there's quite a bit of about 350 acres that surround the tower. On either side right now it's just a bunch of uh, bare grasses I guess. And um, But we're going to turn it into a learning landscape. Um, so as you come in here through the tower, now you will have um, accommodations for bus loads where you can actually do outdoor classrooms. Um, uh, outdoor classroom programs and then the various types of um, uh, meanders here that take you through stories about Lewis and Clark, different types of prairies that occur in Illinois, Illinois woodlands, um, how do wetlands function, wetland plants, discuss watersheds, rain gardens. We have about 12 different um, demonstration areas but again working with um, the landscape architect to uh, co-develop um, a program that is aesthetic, functional, and, and informational. A lot of times, and you know, the landscape architect will have already noted on the plan that this is a perfect place for an interpretive plaza, and I grab that and run with it. You know, what is, what, when that, there's that, you know, 500 square feet of space that I can take and do something um, really interesting. So I'll take that and look at um, does it make sense? Is brick the, the, the media out there, or really is it, you know, is it um, site stone that I should be working with? What is most indigenous to the site? And, and there again, what also makes sense from a long lasting point of view, um, you know, is, is 
ceramic tile an appropriate material? And, and what's going to tell, do I, is a mosaic the right form to tell that story? So you're basically, again, looking at what's indigenous, what's sensitive, um, how do you take that story of a spiral of time and turn that into something that somebody wants to walk around and read and step on, play on, um, and, and get information from at the same time. I hope you've enjoyed learning about how an interpretive designer can complement a landscape architect's work. As you begin your next project, perhaps consider working with an interpretive designer to provide meaning, engagement, and education for your visitors to enhance their experience while they're there.